this is going to be, uh, I admit, a bit out of character for me that I'm going to do the top five reasons not to get into turntables or analog at this time. Now, don't misunderstand, I still love records. I still love turntables. I've been playing more vinyl over the last few months than I have in years. I love records and turntables. But it's, it's not for everyone. And that's the purpose of doing this, this top five list. So I'm gonna start with number five. The number five reason not to get into records at this time is, well, Vinyl slash analog is an imperfect medium compared to digital, right? Vinyl has a less flat frequency response than digital. It's noisier than digital. It has inferior stereo separation than digital. It has wear issues, although with good turntables, that's less of an issue than you might think. Um, speed stability in terms of what we used to call wow and flutter, digital is just better. It just is better than analog. So on a technical basis, you might say, digital hands down is superior to analog. Now I still think that analog, good turntable, good arm, good cartridge sounds better, but that's another story. But I'm saying technically speaking, I think digital wins hands down. Number four, the number four reason not to get into analog at this time is it's expensive. <laughs> it certainly is. I mean, well, digital is either free, you can stream on the internet for free, internet radio, you can watch music on uh, YouTube for free, uh, but for $10 a month, you can get good quality streaming from Tidal or Cobuzz or Apple or whatever for not very much money and have all the music in the world as opposed to buying one record at a time. Digital is free and analog is definitely a more expensive way to go. And of course, again, turntables are expensive, cartridges are good ones are expensive. So yeah, digital hands down wins in terms of what it costs to listen to music on. The number three reason not to get into analog at this time is it's a lot of work, certainly compared to digital. If you've, if you've grown up streaming music or listening to music on the internet, which requires practically nothing from you, it's so convenient, it's so easy. Playlists, internet radio, there's nothing to it really. But playing records is, uh, well, almost a labor intensive process by comparison, right? Well, first you have to get the record, I mean, buy the record in the first place, but then you have to get it off your shelf, take the record out of the sleeve, put it on the platter, put the stylus in the groove, lift the arm at the end of the record, put it on the rest, pick out another record to play. There's a lot to it, certainly compared to streaming and even playing CDs. Playing records is certainly more work and less convenient. You know, If you wanna listen to music while you're preparing dinner or something, you're more likely to just stream it than to play a record, unless you don't mind getting <laughs> olive oil all over your records. Number two, the number two reason not to get into analog at this time is it takes up space, a lot of living space. Turntables are not that much space, but they do take up shelf space. And records, if you have more than a hundred or so, wall space. And if you have many hundreds, lots of wall space. And if you have thousands, as I do, <laughs> most of your walls could be covered with records. Digital, it's all, it's all virtual, right? So it's not any space at all. And CDs do take up space, but actually a less space than LPs. So yeah, there's no contest. Again, digital is better in terms of just living <laughs> with this stuff, right? There's less going on with digital than there is with analog. The big finish. Okay, ready for the big finish? The number one reason not to get into vinyl or turntables at this time is it's too late to start now. I mean, <laughs> because it's expensive, because it takes up space, because you're not used to doing it. I mean, it's, it's weird to think of someone starting out now, say, yeah, I wanna get into vinyl. Really, you do? You've grown up with this easy way out and now you're gonna go through all this work and all this expense and all this space and all this stuff to play records? Is it too late? Well, that's the thing. It, it is for a lot of people. It is too late to start now. You have to sort of be, pardon the expression, 
an audio file. You have to be craving that thing, that analog magic to make it be worth it. You know, I think even, even among audiophiles, most of us are digital only audiophiles. They don't have any analog in their system whatsoever. And even among the ones that do, digital is the dominant format for them. So it's a relatively small slice of the audiophile community that is pretty serious about turntables and records and cartridges and all that stuff for all the reasons that I've just elucidated, right? But having said that, now I've been sort of a devil's advocate in this, in this episode today because obviously I love it. I really, really do. And, and a matter of fact, it warms my heart that when I go into stores that sell audio or sell records, I see lots of people under 40s and 30s and even 20s and a couple of teenagers getting into vinyl. And I think that is a fantastic thing. So if you have the passion for it, because that's what it requires, if you have a passion for it, then sure, yes, you should get into turntables and analog at this time, as long as you know what you're getting into. And that's why I put together this list. So yeah, I think, I think vinyl, well, let me put it this way. Uh, in my life, the records that I bought 50 plus years ago, many of them, I was going to, how many? Hundreds. I'm sure a hundred, at least a hundred of them are still important to me and I play them on a regular basis. I, I mentioned this before in other videos. I love early Rolling Stones, the pre uh, Sticky Fingers era Rolling Stones. I play those records all the time. More, more Stones than Beatles even, but but plenty of Beatles and plenty of Santana and Jefferson Airplane. Yes, I am a baby boomer, no doubt about it. But I like a lot of contemporary music as well. But the point here is that vinyl, physical media, is something that you would carry that you will carry through your life if it's meaningful to you. And what else would have that appeal? That it doesn't just sit on a shelf, you know, an award you won in high school or something, but something you use. What else do you have that you've had for decade upon decade that's still meaningful to you? Yeah, not like pictures in an album that you drag it every year or two. No, this is something that you use on a regular basis. Vinyl, music, it has that kind of staying power that few things in life have. So. Streaming, people who grow up streaming with digital, I don't know what that's going to be like for them as the decades roll on that they don't have a, a tangible connection to the music that they love, the music of their youth. You know, like if you're 20 years old today in 2070 and you look back upon this time and you don't have something that you can touch and hold in your hand, will it mean as much to you as it does to me? I don't know. We don't know how that's going to turn out. But I can say, hey, I, I've got mine. I have my records. And I'm so glad I still have them. Because, yeah, one of the things about living with records is because they are big and they are heavy. And if you move a lot, just dragging them along from one house to the next or one apartment to the next. So, yeah, a lot of people jettison their record collection in the process of moving or before they move because, eh. well, and then many, many people who have done that uh, come to regret that decision, jettisoning their record collection. And now, and now it is that very, very, very special time for the audiophiliac viewer system of the day. This one comes from Mario, and he's got two speaker systems there, but he's not running them at the same time. There are Magnapan 1.7i's and also Merlin VSM SE speakers, PS Audio BHK250, yikes. PS Audio Stellar M1200s, those are a pair of them, those are monos, and also a tube amp, a Dynaco ST70. The preamp is a PS Audio BHK, PS Audio Direct Stream DAC, PS Audio Stellar Phono Preamp, PS Audio Power Plant 12, PS Audio Power Plant 5, and oh, for transport, there's a PS Audio Perfect Wave SACD. For the analog side of things, Mario is running a VPI Scout 2 turntable with a VPI analog drive system control. Also for analog, there's Sweet Vinyl Sugar Cube SC2 Vinyl Noise Remover. There is a DAT deck in this system, a Tascam DA20 Mark II. Back to analog with a Nakamichi MR2 cassette deck. Oh. 
and a mini disc player, a Sony MDS GB920. There's a pair of subwoofers in this system. They are Atlanta Audio Club built 10 inch subs. Each one is driven by a Dayton Audio 1000 watt amp. And the crossover for the subs is a Bryston 10B. Mario, that is a very serious system. Thanks for sending it in. <laughs> we are back. My name is Steve Guttenberg and I am the Audiophiliac. If you like what I'm doing here on the channel, please hit the like button and also please subscribe if you have not yet already done that. Oh, and speak of doing things, please check out my Patreon, which can be found at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash audiophiliac. And there is a link to that directly below. And by the way, Patreon now accepts payment in dollars, pounds, and euros. And with that, I can say my work here is at last complete. Thank you again for watching, and I really, really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon.